Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video in this. I actually want to talk about my frustrations with regards to the cost of the newer migraine medications. So before I get into any more details, time for the intro. One of the things that really frustrates me about newer medications in particular is how expensive they are. There's a bunch of different reasons for this, but I'm basically gonna essentially do a little bit of a rant today about the fact that what's the point in making all of these new medications, most commonly monoclonal antibody drugs, if they're not really accessible to people who cannot work or are on limited incomes. Now, the worst part about this is, is if people with migraines had a way of basically controlling or allowing to reduce our migraine days, we'd be able to be productive in society. If the people who honestly need it the most can't afford them, and they can't afford them because they're unable to work, so therefore they're unable to get them, and that only reason why they're in that position is because they're unable to work, so they can't afford them. It's like a perpetual feedback loop, basically. If that's the only thing that lies between you and having a productive life? Is that an ethical problem? That's my question. Because this person is in chronic pain. Chronic pain affects your quality of life. So if your quality of life is affected, how can these not either be A, allowed to be used or approved by the government, and or B, why are they so inaccessible if it leads to an improved quality of life for a lot of people? Now, I'm going to make a little bit of a point here that these medications likely won't help everybody. We're all a little bit different. Probably some people are going to benefit off of other treatments that maybe haven't been found yet. Or they just, for some reason, they don't benefit from this. But there's a lot of people who end up saying, I noticed a significant difference between when I started this trial with this medication and then I couldn't continue it. How many people are we missing to chronic migraines or even other types of chronic headache conditions that can't go on to school because they can't function enough to be able to complete the program? How many of us have had to switch paths in life because we're unable to function or unable to really continue with the path that we're on because it's too much for those of us with migraines or IIH. How many has that happened to? Because it's happened to me. Society needs to sometimes help the people who are suffering the most. For those of you who have chronic pain, it doesn't necessarily have to be IIH or migraines. It could be something like you had an accident 10, 15 years ago and now you have this back pain that never goes away and now you're trying to deal with how do I manage this chronic pain because it's interfering with every aspect of my life. So those of you who have chronic pain will have a little bit better of an understanding. Now I understand that a lot of people have migraines. It's a very common condition. Every single person who has migraines has it affect their life. People with chronic migraines have it to a higher extent because you're having migraines that much more frequently. So if somebody is suffering, the point should be to relieve that suffering. And if you find something that works, cost should never outrule 
the ability for that person to be able to access something that works. I don't understand this concept of, oh, it's too costly, because if that person gets to the point where they're able to contribute back to society again, then shouldn't it be an incentive for governments or even workplaces to incentivize the fact that you're trying, you can pay taxes, you can bring in an income, you can be a part of doing all of those things that you want to do. But it seems like with migraines, this whole idea of this person is suffering gets completely thrown out the window. Whether it's due to stigma, whether it's due to something else, I have no idea. I found an article actually this morning when I was trying to get ideas of what I wanted to talk about in this video from Vice. And this is an article, I believe it said it was published in 2019. I'm just gonna put it up actually right here. And I wanna quote something from this article. To deny us a chance at a normal life, confined to welfare or consistently at risk of losing our jobs, unable to have a productive life, simply because there's too many of us is cruel and inexplicable. I have to agree with this statement and it's kind of the whole point of trying to get at with this video. To deny somebody something that is working, in my opinion, is completely unethical and it's wrong and it needs to change. This is talking about the government in Australia, but it's probably quite applicable to everywhere else too that has where the government will subsidize medications. And to say that we're not going to cover this because there's so many people who have migraines is just ridiculous. What's the point in even making these drugs available if it's only available to people who can actually afford to stay home? It needs to get to the point where these drugs are either just not offered because it's not being accessible to the people who really need them, or they need to be offered and covered so that the people who could directly benefit from them and have the most benefit from them, which is probably the lower to kind of lower middle income class type of people, they need to have this stuff covered so that they can return back to society and completely change their lives around. Who knows, one of these people could be the answer to cancer research or ha write a paper that wins a Nobel Prize. Like you just never know. One of these people could be suffering from migraines and all it takes for them is to be able to have access to these medications and they would be able to contribute to society again. I'm just gonna end this video actually with a personal story. So as you guys know, I was diagnosed with IIH in 2018. I had actually just graduated from my bachelor's degree in biochemistry that year in June. Now, I got sick at the end of January initially, which w with what I believe was symptoms of IIH at that time. I first had an infection, and then right after that, I started getting the double vision and all of that. I nearly almost didn't finish my program. And had I not finished my program, I wouldn't have finished it. I pushed through a lot in those last few months of my degree and it was very close. Now actually I ended up finishing stronger than what I had because I had to work so hard and got a little bit lucky during the month of April that I was feeling okay. I wouldn't be able to go on. I've been hesitating on what to do next because I don't know what I can handle with either of these conditions. Now I'm a little bit more confident because I'm feeling a little bit better. Like I said, I've seemed to have found a medication for migraines that works. However, it still makes me nervous, but at least it's a little bit more stable than it was. And the fact that that could be the difference for somebody who can't access these other medications or can't find something that works for them with migraines, in my opinion, is just cruel and it shouldn't be happening. So I just want you guys who deny having access to prescription drugs for people, I think this should include all prescription drugs, whether or not it's expensive or not. If it's been approved by the regulatory agencies in the country, they should be allowed to be accessed and cost should not be a factor in whether a person is able to access these medications or not. Yes, I know it increases taxes and all of that, but 
if those people are further able to help, you're subsidizing actually less because those people are able to pay income tax as well. It's very similar, in my opinion, to the people in the US who are basically unable to access any type of health care because they're unable to work. It shouldn't be that you can't access something that could help you actually thrive in the end because cost is a burden to you. If you're enjoying my content, please feel free to subscribe. Remember that it's completely free. It just allows us to reach more people with IIH and migraines. When you're subscribing, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming future content. If you enjoyed this particular video, be sure to give it a like. If you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.